Hello everyone, this is a video I wanted to make for a long time and that's discussing small bowel obstruction or how to assess for bowel obstruction. This is probably a very high yield subject for many of you. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're interested in general medicine, in surgery, in radiology or uh, any of the other multiple subspecialties, you're going to have to deal with a patient that has uh, symptoms that could be uh, related to small bowel obstruction or ileus uh, or partial small bowel obstruction. So let's start by by defining the, the basics. We have a uh, couple of signs that can indicate small bowel obstruction. And for the most part, the majority of bowel obstruction that you're going to encounter is going to be related to the small bowel. Uh, we should mention a couple of things about the small bowel. Um, in general, a diameter more than 3.5, you start thinking about obstruction or an abnormal dilation of the small bowel. So 3.5 centimeter uh, is a good uh, mark, a, a good size to, to have in your mind. And the other thing, so since small bowel obstructions are more common than large bowel obstructions, we also uh, have to consider things uh, such as partial small bowel obstruction. And, uh, you know, in, in reality, the diagnosis is really a clinical diagnosis or traditionally has been uh, a clinical diagnosis. And the reason I say this is uh, the, the more experience we gain with imaging and with radiology, um, for better or for worse, people are going to be relying more uh, on the imaging findings, but, but we must not forget really uh, where to, to draw the line. And uh, bowel obstruction is one that you should be very comfortable drawing the line in the sense that you're going to try to give them an idea, but it ultimately it is a, a clinical diagnosis. And what I mean by this is you can have a patient with a, a small bowel of four centimeters, for example, uh, and you're thinking this is probably uh, a, a total small bowel obstruction, but the patient is passing gas, for example, so or having normal bowel movements. So by definition, it doesn't matter what you see at that point in time, your CT, or even in your x-ray, KUB and abdominal film, uh, you do not have a complete bowel obstruction. So that's something to, to have in mind. So uh, the way I see it, I try to give uh, the clinician or the family member or whoever uh, it is a, a, an idea. So I, I tend to have the, uh, once I see dilation, I see fluid filled loops of bowels, uh, air fluid levels, I start thinking about uh, the first step, or, or kind of like almost the, the most benign one, would be ileus. Then I have uh, partial small bowel obstruction as uh, another category, uh, but sometimes you cannot really distinguish between ileus and a partial small bowel obstruction. And then the other category will be uh, the small bowel obstruction. And sometimes you cannot distinguish between a partial small bowel obstruction and a complete small bowel obstruction. So let's just uh, look at this uh, uh, CAT scan here. So we have a patient that had nausea, vomiting. Uh, he got oral contrast, in this case, gastrographin. Uh, most of the contrast, or perhaps all of it, is still uh, in, the, in the stomach. And when you look at this, we see duodenal loop coming here, so pyloric region coming down duodenal loop and then this is a four centimeter dilation of the duodenum so you already know it you have a normal size it's also fluid filled you don't see any air um, so you can see why the patient is having symptoms um, 3.5 was the measurement here so we're already in uh, loops of jejunum and we have 3.8 centimeters so remember the number i told you in this case this is already uh, above that level so the other helpful thing you can do is try to identify what's causing this bowel obstruction. Is it a mass? Uh, is it uh, uh, adhesions? Is it something else? So in this case, I pointed out some adhesions that I noticed. And uh, in fact, this patient had uh, multiple abdominal surgeries in the past, and this was very consistent with the history. So that's one uh, adhesions. And people think we see adhesions really well, but you're only seeing the indirect signs of it. So we see a loop of bowel and we have severe ta tapering here. And, and this is what people will call a transition point, And this is consistent with uh, an abdominal adhesion.
you go further down, and in this case, that had adhesion could have been the entire cause of the bowel obstruction. In this case, I, I uh, found another transition point, um, which is also not uncommon. People can have multiple adhesions, and uh, both of them can be actually, although here you're seeing it at, at, at different points, it can be related to a same uh, band, if you want to call it, of, of adhesion, or it could just be that the patient has multiple ones, and once the the bowel gets distended in one point, you'll see changes in, in the other as well. And so this develops as, as a process. So my, my read in this case, um, I, was, I read it as either a partial small bowel obstruction or a developing total small bowel obstruction. Uh, the other things you look at is, a, is uh, at the large bowel. So in, in a patient with obstruction, the traditional teaching is that the large bowel is going to be decompressed. So look how small this colon is. So obviously this patient is already showing signs uh, that would be closer to, uh, to a total small bowel obstruction. So the interesting thing is that sometimes after the, the scan, uh, so this is why your history is, is important. So uh, in this case, after the scan, the patient had a bowel movement and therefore uh, the diagnosis of small bowel obstruction beca be became less prevalent. So even though the patient uh, might have had small bowel obstruction at this time, the fact that they had a bowel movement makes pretty much whatever radiological diagnosis you make at that point or at this point uh, irrelevant because the patient has uh, evidence of, of uh, resolution in, in terms of their symptoms. The uh, So the other thing that's helpful to, helpful to know is that gastrographin tends to um, be a highly osmotic agent. So sometimes by absorbing uh, a little bit more fluid, it, it almost uh, has a therapeutic effect that has been described in terms of decompressing some of the bowel. So that, that's really something very interesting. So in, in this case, uh, this is a great example of why you need the clinical history and how things might change. You have a partial small bowel obstruction that could become worse, or you could have a small bowel obstruction that could be getting better. So I hope uh, this uh, video provides you an overview of how to approach uh, this type of diagnosis and, and to give you an idea of how, um, how important it is to have the, the clinical picture and the clinical assessment. Uh, last but not least, I wanted to show you another plane in which uh, those of you that are not that familiar uh, with an axial view can appreciate what uh, what this type of transition point looks like. So this is one one of the adhesions we identified. So you can see some tapering here. And I'll show you the other one. So this one is very obvious. So dilated loop of bowel going into a very small loop of bowel, probably being, being uh, constrained by a, a, an abdominal adhesion here. Uh, so this pretty much shows you the the two transition points or the two narrow areas that we identified uh, on the prior exam. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe and share.